So hi Fresh Baked, I'm back with a follow-up video to the one that we did uh, a few days ago about what they're planning to do for uh, the Rivers of America, Mark Twain, Star Wars Land, all that. Uh, since we posted that video, almost like immediately after, there was all kinds of follow-ups that, that really they need to be discussed. Um, namely, that Disneyland on Twitter, without going into any detail really, confirmed that the Rivers of America will be rerouted. So without saying a lot, they've said all they need to say, really, is that, yes, there, <laughs> there's going to be a new train route. I mean, that, means, that means that the Mice Chat article is probably mostly accurate. Now, <clears throat> where do I begin? The first thing that I want to talk about is actually the follow-up photo that I found or that was shown to me from Slash Film. And this, this photo actually is the, is the first thing that, that helped to sort of take me off the ledge. Because when I looked at the, the Mice Chat photo and they just drew those lines right across the rivers, I'm just like, oh my god, look at that. It's just, all I saw was this huge eraser, just like, nope, scratch, I hate it. We're not doing this anymore. We're going to put something else in there. And that's what my mind kind of just went bonkers on that. But then when you look at the Slash Film photo, what they did is they, they created a little animatic where they just, they just squished it. They, <laughs> they took the tree line that exists and push the tree line down and then rerouted the river a little bit. And I'm like, that's not, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Uh, what can I take away from that? Well, it's still going all the way around. The Mark Twain will still go all the way around. Uh, the views are still going to be beautiful, assuming that they do what, what the Slash Film photo suggests, which I have no doubt they, that they will. Uh, you're still going to have the same tree line views, and it's going to look good. It's going to look good. Okay, the Rivers of America will still look good. It'll still feel the same. I believe, having, you know, let my imagination work on it a little bit. I think it's still going to feel the same when you go around. It's, it's going to be shorter, but is that a bad thing? And, I'll, and I say that because this. It's weird, actually, now that I think about that, how all these topics that we've been discussing lately are coalescing. Uh, you have my discussion on the people mover, the discussion on overcrowding, uh, the, discussion, the, the, the video that, I don't even know if it's come out yet or not, but I got, a, I got some training manuals from 1967, and those training manuals... Uh, covered like for the frontier line for Mark Twain and for the rivers of America and all that stuff anything that was happening there and there was all kinds of history and it really touched me and I'm like gosh I just love it I loved this part of the park so much just as it is so all those things are kind of coming together right in this in this one topic and <clears throat> one of the most important takeaways and something that I've said for years is that if we don't let Disney evolve, we don't get really cool things. And I've, I've maintained for a long time that my favorite attraction is Big Thunder. Imagine if they said, you know what, the the uh, the you know the little the frontier scene that they had there with the stagecoach and the and the calico my calico that's not Sperry Farm anyway the Rainbow Caverns mine train. <laughs> oh my God, uh, you know, let's say oh, I don't want to touch that. You know, that's the original Walt design. We wouldn't have Big Thunder. And Big Thunder works in Disneyland. And it's funny because it works so good, in fact, that I would bet that a large percentage of people think it's OG. That they, they think it's an original attraction. So we have to we have to sort of let that simmer. We have to let that that change simmer a little bit before we can appreciate it. Um, so I gotta give myself that. And some people have been kind enough to remind me of the things that I've said, like in the People Mover. Uh, video as well, which is good. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> and here's another thing. I I brought this up to Candy, and I said, Candy, did you hear? This is why I was still upset. Did you hear what they're gonna do to the Rivers of America? And she's like, What? I said, They're gonna they're gonna shrink it. They're gonna they're gonna crop it so you can fit more Star Wars land. And she's like, Good. <laughs> I'm like, What? <laughs> what? <laughs> she's like, Yeah, that part of the park is boring anyway. There's nobody there. <laughs> you know what on on careful consideration maybe not to me it's i don't think it's boring it's well i'll say this it's less interesting than the rest of the tour on the, on the mark twain or the columbia what i mean to say is i love the mark twain i love the columbia i love the canoes uh <clears throat> but once you pass the hungry bear that section between the hungry bear and uh, Tom Sawyer's Island went on the backside of the Pirate's Lair where, you know, you can see the people playing. That section is kind of a yawner, you guys. It's kind of a yawner. We're just kind of waiting until they make that right turn and head back to port, and you get to see Tom Sawyer's Island over there on the right. Uh, so, yeah, and 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like I could I, I, I could go with a shorter route there. I'd be okay with that. And here's another thing: when we when we do the, uh, the 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 training manuals for Davy Crockett canoes and the Mark Twain and the Columbia, you get to look inside the manual. There's figures, uh, you know, hourly capacities, and 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 Tom Sawyer's Island does 350 guests per hour. No, I'm sorry, 550 guests per hour. 550 guests per hour. That's the capacity for, for Tom Sawyer's Island. Guys, that is that is nothing. That is literally nothing. Uh, I don't know. Pick any attraction. It, they're doing at least 1,000. And I, and, and I, I don't want to say that the capacity is everything, but look at the conversation we just had about about it's overcrowded. What are they going to do about overcrowding? Well, they're doing something about overcrowding. <laughs> okay. They've taken sections of the park, and they're, they're not going to change it substantially, I don't think. We're still, like I said, we're still getting the same look and feel as we take the Mark Twain around the river. It's just smaller. Okay? They, it's just smaller. It's more condensed. That's not so bad. And th that part of Tom Sawyer's Island that they're talking about cropping off, you can't go back there anyway. You can't see that part of the island anyway. Now, it's, I, I figure, you know what, we're going to go to the island hopefully on Saturday, and I'll try to do a video on that, and then we'll get a better idea. But... Uh, most of the part of the island that you are going to lose is stuff that you couldn't go to anyway. So I'm not that part of it. I'm not worried about. It's it's the fact that you're only doing 550 per hour on Tom Sawyer's Island, and you're only doing something like 1200 per hour on the Mark Twain. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean does 2500 per hour, I think. Right? I mean, good heavens. I'm not saying I want Tom. So I mean, pirates capacity on every attraction, uh, but it, it's. We've asked for this. We've asked for this in many different ways. We've asked for Star Wars Land. We've asked for uh, to reduce crowds, and we've asked for new stuff. We've asked for something new, which is whatever it is—a new attraction, a new ride. So, what are they supposed to do? You can't like you can't do both, right? What are they supposed to do? So, I have calmed down quite a bit, and and finally, I want to I want to kind of close on on this on this notion, this idea, something that helps me you know, stay mellow and not jump off that ledge is that Disney has proven over and over again that they are really good at this. They are really, really good at this. They're really good at theming. They're really good at immersion. They're really good at completing the experience. So I don't believe that they would just butcher uh, a ride around the rivers of America. I don't, I don't think they will. I think they're going to give us just what we've remembered uh, it, you know, maybe not as long, but it, it, maybe it was, like I said, it was too long anyway, but you're still going to get the same views. You're going to get the same sounds. You're going to get the same feeling. I, I believe that that's going to happen. It's just, you know, and in the meantime, they're going to, they're going to be able to blend Star Wars land into the edge of Frontierland in a way that we're, we were accustomed to. I, I've heard, a, I've heard a lot actually in the comments, uh, that Star Wars doesn't belong next to Frontierland. It doesn't fit thematically or whatever. To which I say, I don't understand that at all. I don't understand that argument in the least bit because I don't know if you're not paying attention, but the Jungle Cruise backs to Main Street, you guys. Okay? The Jungle Cruise is 10 feet from uh, the Emporium. You, if you were to sit and if you were to sit, and I've heard, I've actually heard, um, who was it? Uh, Ron Miller. say if, if, When you sit in Walt's apartment, you hear all day the gunshots and the, and, the, and the traffic on the Jungle Cruise, okay? They're feet from each other. So this is not anything new for, for Disneyland. They know how to put two lands back to back and you don't feel like, you know, you've intruded on either one of them. Okay, so I, I have no doubts about their ability to do that. I'm positive that they can handle that. Um, and I, I'm positive that they're going to give you a quality experience on the rivers and I'm positive they're going to give you a quality experience at Star Wars and I'm positive that I overreacted. <laughs> <laughs> at least just a little bit in my first video. But I'll say this in my own defense that I had that in mind, you know, about patience and, and understanding about, you know, Disney changing and evolving. It's just that at the moment, I just thought it was more severe than it needed to be. When I asked Candy about, you know, she said, well, don't they, they need the room? They need that room. And I said, well, do they really? I don't know that they did need that room, but perhaps they might have. I don't know. I felt like they could have fit everything into the space on the other side of the berm without crossing over into the rivers of America. But I don't know. I'm not an Imagineer. I don't know how to build a theme park, so I can't speak to that. 
Um, but that was the reason why I got so upset was that it just seemed so aggressive. It just seemed so aggressive. It was just like, Rah! we're just going to take it over. Like, like I thought we were clear cutting a rainforest. That's how it felt to me. All right. So uh, this is a message to all of you who were on my side. And you can still be on my side that it was before. I totally, totally get what you're saying. I totally understand everybody being upset. But I, for one, have come down off the edge. Um, and I'm, again, looking forward to watching the progress of The Rivers of America and Star Wars Land. And, um, and the, the safe return of the Mark Twain, Columbia, uh, the Canoes, and Fantasmic. Hopefully, maybe Fantasmic, who knows? Maybe it'll be better. Maybe it'll be better. All right, so Fresh Baked, let me know what you think. What have you, what do you, how do you feel about having me gone through this again with you? Uh, are you still upset? Or are you feeling a little bit better about it now? Have you time to go through the seven steps of the, gr the grieving process? Because I did. I went through all seven steps and like, I don't know, 24 hours, which I don't know if that's typical or not, but I, I went through it all. There was denial and anger and bargaining and <laughs> depression. What was the other one? I can't think, I can't name acceptance. I don't know, there's two more there somewhere, but I went through them all. But how did you guys do? How, where are you today in your, in your grieving process? Because it's going to happen and there's nothing we can do about it, guys. So uh, let me know your thoughts, Fresh Baked. And until next time, thanks for watching and Fresh Baked this stuff. Bye, guys. I love you. We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out our Secrets and History videos or maybe our ride-throughs, or you can just watch all of our weekly trip reports and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. It truly is the best of Disney Bake Fresh daily. Oh, and don't forget, you can support Fresh Bake through our Patreon campaign, link below. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Fresh Bake!